Hello cheapskaters. I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing. If this is your first time visiting us, welcome. And if it's not, welcome back. To join the live chat tonight, you need to be logged into your YouTube channel or your Gmail account. And that's a YouTube requirement, not a Kath one. If you don't have either of those, you can comment in the section below. That's fine. Do you remember back in 2020 when toilet paper was scarce? Well, in 2022, it's oil that is scarce. Cooking oil is scarce. Or it will be. Or it could be. Or it has been. Whatever. The news has been full of doom and gloom lately on all sorts of things. But over cooking oil, too, of all things. Now, don't get me wrong. Cooking oil is important. We all use it at some stage. We need it for frying, for baking bread, for roasting, for making salad dressings, for making marinades, and a myriad of other things. It's a common household requirement. And it has been since Bible times. So I thought tonight we'd talk about different oils and how I use them in our kitchen. So you don't need to panic if you can't get your regular oil. Because oils ain't oils, but they are oils. For starters, let me just say, not all oils have the same health benefits or work as well in cooking as others. And most definitely, not all oils, no matter how they are marketed to us on TV, on radio, in print media, social media, whatever, are good for us. Now, in our kitchen, I mainly use two oils, olive oil and sunflower oil. Sunflower oil is one that is supposedly going to be very scarce. Occasionally, I'll use coconut oil. And I'll go through the other oils because looking at it, I actually do use a few different types of oil. I just don't use a lot of any of them. The number one oil in my kitchen is olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. I use olive oil for roasting vegetables because I love the flavour it gives them. I use it in savoury muffins, in bread, scones, savoury scones, um, because I love the flavour it gives them. And olive oil is also a good oil. It's one that generally hasn't been corrupted by manufacturing or GMOs. Good oil. And the health benefits of olive oil are many. Now, I use extra virgin olive oil for dressings and for drizzling over um, salads. It just gives them just that little bit of extra oomph. The good thing is olive oil is very low in omega-6 fatty acids, and they're the ones that we really want to avoid. And it's very high in the flavonoids. And they are really good for us. And it's really, really high in antioxidants. And they are really, really good for us. So it's a good oil to have in the pantry. It's very stable um, when it's heated. And that's good too. Now, I buy olive oil in tins. If you're going to buy it, you're not usually buy it, look for... Um, tins or dark glass bottles and store it in a cool dark cupboard for the best shelf life. Light and heat are the enemy of all oils but especially olive oil and once you've opened it try to use it within six months. Now it comes on sale regularly so keep an eye open and if you want the best olive oil, try and find one that's locally produced from locally grown olives. 
that you might pay a little bit more, not a lot more, but a little bit more, but you'll taste the difference straight away. You'll notice the difference in the colour and in the scent too. Now, I also use olive oil in savoury breads, and by savoury breads, I mean regular sandwich loaves, herb breads, pizza dough. It makes pizza dough so smooth. Um, tortillas, again, it makes them so smooth. Things like that. I don't use olive oil in sweet breads, in raisin bread or hot cross buns, donuts, and so on, because I can taste it. And I don't like the taste in sweet breads which is why I don't use olive oil in cakes either because I can taste it and I don't like that taste. For just general frying, I use sunflower oil. And this is supposedly one of the oils that's going to be scarce for a few reasons and you can find them if you do your research. Now, why do I like sunflower oil for frying? Well, olive oil has a very low smoke point, so it's not a good oil for high temperature, quick frying or for deep frying. Sunflower oil, itchy nose guys, sunflower oil on the other hand is very light and it can handle the higher temperatures required for quick frying and deep frying. And it has a nice neutral flavour, so you can use sunflower oil in your cake mixes. Now, I use it in sweet cakes and muffins, in puddings, um, in some marinades because of its really neutral flavour. It has a really um, mild taste. And if you're going to put it into sweet cakes or muffins, instead of butter or applesauce, you won't notice any difference other than your, it might be a bit more moist. Avocado oil is another good oil for shallow frying. And believe it or not, avocado oil, like the fruit, is good for us. It raises the level of the good cholesterols in our bodies and lowers the bad cholesterol. And it comes along with a healthy dose of vitamin E too, which is good for our skin. And vitamin E is an antioxidant and we need those antioxidants. They are good for us. I also have sesame oil in the pantry. Now, I use sesame oil sparingly because it is very strong. You don't want to overdo the sesame oil, but it is great in stir fries and just a few drops in your fried rice takes it to another level. It has this really nice nutty flavour and in Asian dishes, it just makes them sing. It is wonderful. Now, a small bottle will last a long, long time because you only use a little bit. So I try to buy the smallest bottle I can. It's only tiny um, because otherwise I run the risk of it going rancid and then it's wasted. And sesame oil is a little expensive, so I'd rather not run the risk of wasting it. Next up is oh, we call it an oil and it is but you look at it and it's not unrefined virgin coconut oil now i really love the flavor this gives baking you get just that tiniest teeniest hint just a hint of coconut i like the health benefits too coconut oil is very high in fat though so if you're watching your weight eat it sparingly but it is also very low in omega-6 fatty acids. They're the really bad ones that we want to avoid, like the plague. We don't want to eat those if we can avoid them. Coconut oil is solid at room temperature. You probably all know that. You've all seen the jars. It's had a really um, a real resurgence lately. In the last few years, it's become very popular. It's great for cooking. It's great for just spreading on your bread instead of butter. Spread it thinly on your bread instead of butter. Then put your toppings on. You get this beautiful flavour. You still get the, the moistness that you get from your butter or margarine or whatever you want, but it's really good. I like it because it can be whipped. 
scoop some into a bowl, get your electric beater out and whip it and then use it as a moisturiser after your shower. It is so good on dry skin. You whip it up like that, only do a couple of tablespoons at a time and keep it in a clean container in the fridge. It is divine, absolutely divine. And if you have gardening hands like I have at the moment, really good for those gardening hands. Rub it in around the cuticles, put some cotton gloves on and give your hands a treat. Just saying, you know, you don't have to eat it to be able to use it. Coconut oil is really, really versatile. But it's good for cooking too because it also has a high smoke point, about 180 degrees Celsius. So that means it's great for frying. Now, don't forget, you're going to fry in it. Brilliant. You'll get great results. But remember, it's also high in fats, even the good fats, bad fats, good fats. It's high in good fats. So make sure it's really hot up to temperature before you put your food in it. Fry it quickly and drain it well. Another oil I have in the pantry is rice bran oil. Now, I use that in my soap making, but it is also really good for stir fries because it too is less temperature sensitive than some of the other oils. It's really good in bread as well. It's inexpensive. It's regularly on half price sale. So it's a handy one to keep on the shelf. And the last one I generally keep in the um, pantry or rather the fridge is butter. And we don't usually have margarine in our house. We do occasionally. But I prefer butter. I like the taste of butter. I like the colour of butter. I like the feel of butter in my mouth. So butter is my choice of spread. And I like it for baking and for sautéing. So a little butter goes a long, long way and it gives a really rich flavour to gravies and sauces and it can even um, help to thicken your gravies and sauces. So yeah, why wouldn't you have butter? It's expensive, but you only need a very little, very little. If you're going to fry with it, Add a little oil to the butter and it stops it from burning. Unless, of course, you want burnt butter for burnt butter biscuits or burnt butter gravy. Now, all the oils I buy, except for the olive oil, are in small bottles. Because I don't use a lot of them. And I keep them in the kitchen pantry where it's cool and usually dark. Why? Because heat and light damage oils. So if you're buying oil, look to buy in smaller containers, dark glass bottles or tins, and store them in a cool, dark place. Or even in the fridge. I know. Mind-blowing, isn't it? But in the fridge. Some chefs recommend storing oil in the fridge. Yeah, you know, oil doesn't really sort of goes a bit cloudy, it might thicken up a bit. And that's okay. Take it out, let it sit at room temperature for a few minutes and it, it's back to normal. Now, I've told a story where we were camping one winter, one Queen's birthday weekend, and it was so cold that the little bottle of olive oil I had in the back of our car actually froze solid and it didn't just thicken. I've never, I've never seen a solid olive oil before but this was like almost rock hard you could barely get a knife through it that's how cold it was but it came back to normal really really quickly our pantry in the kitchen doesn't get that warm so I don't bother keeping the oil in the fridge but if where you live is very warm or your house gets very warm then perhaps keeping your oil in the fridge wouldn't be a bad thing Another thing I do, or two things I do, to not use as much oil is I put some into a spray bottle. 
or it's a spray um, can really that I got from General Trader. It costs uh, about six dollars and I put some oil into that and then I just spritz things. I can spritz the baking dish or the frying pan or the muffin pans or whatever, the quiche tin, whatever. That works really, really well. And the other thing I have is a silicon pastry brush and a little dish that I keep oil in and it sits next to the stove. So if I wanted to fry eggs, for instance, I just brush the pan with um, the silicon pastry brush that's been dipped in oil. That's more than enough to give the to fry the eggs so they don't stick and to grease the egg rings if I use them. We don't use as much oil that way. It's just another way of saving kilojoules and saving fats in our diet. I do a similar thing when I'm roasting vegetables. I'll get them all ready to roast, so I'll peel them. If they need to be peeled, chop them up. I put them into a bowl, and then depending on what seasonings are going in, so for instance, it might be rosemary and garlic, so they go into a bowl with about hmm, maybe two teaspoons of oil. Give that a stir. And that gets poured over the veggies in the bowl and they get tossed through and put into a hot oven, into the baking dish and then straight into a hot oven. I put them in the baking dish, guys, not straight into the oven. They roast up. They bake really, really well. The outsides are crispy. The insides are fluffy. Huh, perfect roast veggies. And they're not dripping in oil and they're not sitting in the oven soaking up oil. I remember the days where it used to be that you had, you know, oil halfway up the side of the vegetables in the baking dish and then you'd put it in the oven and let them go and then you'd turn them over and they would be dripping and they'd be so soaking up that fat. I don't do that. We don't need to do that anymore. I do the same thing when I'm making wedges. Um, I add paprika instead of the herbs and garlic to the oil and pour it over the wedges in the bowl, dump them into the baking dish, put them into a um, 220 degree oven. I like it nice and hot for wedges. Turn them after 15 minutes, give them another 15 minutes. They are done. They're not greasy. They're browned up. They're cooked through. Have a nice flavour from the paprika. Really, really easy. And it saves on oil. I prefer to do with those things than use cooking spray. Now, I do have cooking spray in the pantry and if I'm um, using a disposable tray, I will use cooking spray, but I try to not use it on my good cake tins or my good baking dishes because cooking spray stains your pans, it stains your baking dishes, and that's because of the lesser than in it. So if it's not really scrubbed off, as soon as it comes out of the oven, you know how it goes sticky and yellow and it just builds up. Things might just flip out of the tin, but the tin, you know, is um, sort of not fit for purpose after a while. Um, so... They're just some of the oils that we have. Well, they're the oils I have in my kitchen. And oil is expensive. It doesn't mean it has to put a strain on your grocery budget. Use it the way I use it. Use it sparingly. Shop wisely and you'll be able to benefit um, from oils, different oils in your kitchen without adding a huge cost to your budget. And if you use it sparingly like I do, it will last a long, long time. Now, I might go through, if we are lucky, I would use two 500ml bottles of sunflower oil a year and maybe one three-litre tin of olive oil. Maybe. 
A bit hard to judge on the coconut and rice bran oils because I don't use them as often. I don't fry a lot. So most of my um, fried foods are actually dry baked. But with your coconut, coconut and rice bran, because I use them in soaps too, it's only a small amount that's used in cooking. So hmm, it's a bit hard to say how much I would use of those in the kitchen, but certainly not one jar or one bottle in a year. I hope that um, this has given you some, hmm, perhaps some insight into oil alternatives if you're just used to buying vegetable oil or canola I don't use canola I refuse to use canola oil um, whatever so that if you go to the shop and you can't find your regular oil do you know that there are alternatives that you can use that will still give you a really nice fried or baked or roasted product at the end I just have to say before I go that as a disclaimer there is a ton of differing information available about cooking oils and their health benefits the oils I've mentioned are the oils I use now bear in mind that I am not a chef I will you won't ever see me on master chef just won't happen I'm not a nutritionist I've chosen to use these particular oils because I've done the research for me these are the oils that fit within our budget and that suit our attitude to a healthy diet they are also the ones we like to taste because all oils have a different taste so I suggest you do your own research and make your own decisions. When it comes to oils, oils ain't oils, but they are oil. And if you're running low, uh, perhaps having an extra bottle or tin in the pantry as a backup won't hurt. We like to keep our pantry stocked. Look, at worst, you're going to avoid a future price rise. At best, you'll avoid a future shortage. You'll have oil in your pantry it will give you time to find another replacement if you need it if you like tonight's show please give us a thumbs up and leave a comment both these things are what youtube calls engagement and the more engagement our channel has the better our youtube ranking is the easier it is for people to find us and people find us, they find out about living the Cheapskates way and about Cheapskates Club. It's all good. And subscribe. Just click the subscribe button and then the notification bell and you'll be notified each time we upload a new video or host a new live show. Two simple things. We won't harass you. If you've liked the show, and you're already subscribed and you know someone who you think might enjoy it there's a share button or a share link just click that and it will simply send them the link to this video we don't harass your friends we won't have any other contact with them it's up to them if they choose to watch the video or not i'll be back next week same time and i hope you can join me until then Keep on cheapskating.